Almost Heaven, West Virginia. What do you think about when you think of West Virginia? The mountains? The rivers? Civil War history? If you're anything like me, just the name West Virginia probably triggered the release of a song that you'll spend the rest of your day trying to get out of your head. Did you know that John Denver wrote that song about country roads in Washington, D.C.? If you go to Georgetown and walk down Q Street, you'll find this house. In the basement, which today is an Airbnb, you will find the apartment where he wrote what would become one of the most well-known songs around the world. But back to West Virginia. With a total population of under 2 million, public transportation probably doesn't jump to the forefront of your mind. The state is crossed by two Amtrak routes, and it is additionally served by a few commuter trains from Washington, D.C. So maybe not quite almost heaven for transit fans like us. But what if I told you that right here in West Virginia, you can ride a super unique transit system? In fact, when it opened, it was an experimental project meant to be the future of public transportation. Today, we are riding personal rapid transit in Morgantown. Morgantown is a city of about 30,000 in the north of West Virginia. It is home to a campus of West Virginia University with around 24,000 students. At first glance, it's your average small college town. It is a Saturday in November and people are tailgating before the football game. But at the top of this hill is Medical Center Station, one of five stations on the Morgantown Personal Rapid Transit System. The Morgantown PRT is a 3.6 mile or 5.8 kilometer system connecting different parts of the campus and the city. It first opened in 1975. Since finding out it existed when I was a kid, I've wanted to ride it. I know that people throw the phrase bucket list around so much that it becomes a little meaningless, but let me tell you, this thing was very high on mine. All right, we're at Health Science Center Station. Time to ride the PRT for the first time. So high, we even took a detour driving from Washington to Chicago just to visit it. So what is PRT? Well, the name Personal Rapid Transit is actually pretty descriptive. It's rapid transit, but more convenient and private for the individual user. Rather than a long train running on a schedule, there are tiny little pods that you call that will bring you to your destination directly. The pods are just big enough to fit you and your companions and they'll bring you straight to your destination without stopping anywhere else. You could think of it as a mix between a taxi and a train, but honestly, the best way to describe it in my opinion is as a horizontal elevator. The good kind of elevator that doesn't stop to pick anyone up on your way down. Huh, where have I seen that yellow and blue before? All right, you pick our first destination. So at the station, at the gates, you push the button to let the system know where you want to go. Screens will then tell you what gate to go to, and if a pod's not there already, it will come soon. Okay. Pods are automated, but one directional. So we first turn around on a loop and then we zoom through the station. We've selected Walnut on the opposite end of the system so we can enjoy a long, uninterrupted ride. The interior of the pods is quite modest, to put it lightly, with hard benches and drab colors. They run on rubber tires over a concrete guideway, receiving the 575 volts of electricity that they need from several small metal rails alongside the track. These vehicles were partially built by Boeing, actually. Oh no, get out, get out, get out. I'm just kidding. It's so bumpy. A ride normally costs 50 cents for non-students, but because it is a game day, we got to ride for free. 
The track is a mix of elevated, at grade, and below grade. And what I love is that during a ride, you'll see pods zooming by you all the time. So we're approaching the first intermediate station, Towers. But remember, we're not stopping. So do we just blast through the station? Not quite. Each intermediate station has its own unique layout to allow pods to skip them without the stopped vehicles getting in their way. This is the layout of Tower Station. And so we continue. At the next station, Engineering Sciences, we pass underneath the platforms. It is quite spectacular to be in a tiny little train zooming over a track in the mountains. It feels out of place, and all the more awesome because of that. Man, I wish my college had this. So why does it exist? Well, it's important to consider the historical context. The 1960s were a time of decline for trains and public transportation in the United States. Technologies that for most people, especially politicians, could not compete with the modern comforts of planes and automobiles. While some cities like DC were planning large metro systems during that time, building such large infrastructure was prohibitively expensive. Government officials, including even Richard Nixon, nevertheless did see the need for some public transportation. But they looked for a way to do so on the cheap and with more of the conveniences of car travel. Personal rapid transit was the conclusion. Soon, a hype around the concept had grown. The 60s became the 70s, and different companies were rushing to build their variant of PRT. A professor at WVU had proposed building such a system on campus, and as the federal government contemplated building a test system somewhere, a senator from West Virginia successfully pressured them to pick Morgantown. Then they had to select a manufacturer, the vehicles that were built by a company called Alden, known as the Star Car, were found to be the most suitable. But since people were worried about whether or not Alden would be able to handle such a large task, they were forced to work together with Boeing to build it all. The Morgantown system faced significant cost issues due in part to the fact that the politicians had forced engineers to complete it in an unrealistic timeline. Partially because of that, and partially because of the continuing downward trend of public opinion towards transit, no real system was ever really built after the Morgantown one opened in 1975. It was kind of just seen as a gadget. Nevertheless, these same vehicles have been faithfully scooting around Morgantown for the last half century. Yep, these trains are coming up on 50 years. Younger than the mountains, but older than the trees. Well, at least older than some of them, probably. I think. There are a total of 73 vehicles in the system, and seeing them all running around is truly an impressive sight to behold. The top speed on the PRT is 30 miles per hour. After exactly 10 minutes, we arrive at the last station of the line, Walnut. Walnut. We made it to Walnut, the other end of the line. PRT might not be the future of transit people hoped it would be. Nevertheless, this is one of the most fun things I've ever done. Uh, we're gonna take it back to an intermediate station. I think we picked Tower, uh, just to check out what those look like. Do not overload the vehicles. No more than 
15 passengers per car. Unfortunately, it looks like there's a little bit of a wait before they open the doors and tell you which pod actually goes to where you want to go. I think it was about five minutes. Gate two will be boarding for each person. All right, which way are you going? Oh, this way. PRT, take us home. On our way to Tower Station, we pass underneath Beechhurst again, and here something unusual happens. Even though technically we're the express train, we have to wait for a stopping train to go ahead of us. We're stuck in traffic. So I guess it is a good thing that personal rapid transit didn't really take off. For one, it makes coming to Morgantown so special. If PRTs were around everywhere, I don't think I would have ever come here. But also there are just some impracticalities and inefficiencies. If you want to move large numbers of people, you're better off with a regular full-size train. What's more, a system like the PRT can work really well on a college campus where there are only a few destinations to connect, but in a larger city setting where people are coming from every different direction, it can't really take over the role of a bus or a train. You would have to build so much specific infrastructure for all the different trips that people take. But that doesn't mean the PRT isn't cool. This was a great experience and I recommend everybody try it out. So we've arrived at Tower Station. I wanted to get an intermediate station just because they look very different from the end stations. They have a little bit more of a complicated track layout, and this is a cool place to see the non-stop shuttles pass by. Gate 3 will be boarding for Beach Hunt. This will cause the door to malfunction and cause delays. Of course, now we have to get back to the engineering station which is where we parked our car. To do so, of course, you have to go through the gates again because you have to call the pod that will take you to your destination. You can take a pod between any two stops on the system. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and for joining me as I ride one of the world's most unique transit systems that I've wanted to ride for years. I highly recommend checking out the Morgantown PRT. If you're ever in the area and you get tired of the country roads, just take a ride on the personal rapid transit. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.